Oui. Thank you, Ben. Uh, yeah, and thank you for opening up uh, also this angle of decommissioning that was also present in, I think, the debate in the chat for a bit, because, yes, we all know that there, the, there's one endeavor building a nuclear power plant and there's a whole separate, equally uh, difficult uh, economically, technologically, organizationally uh, endeavor to decommission it. Uh, we've had just a few, I think so far, uh, two questions or now there's uh, three questions uh, that we have. Um, I know maybe just before I go into th those questions, uh, we've been getting a lot of requests to share the presentations of the speakers. So uh, I, Dave and Sven have already, um, um, yeah, I think we shared it with a few, but we'll share the, the entire three presentations after today, we'll share it via email to everybody who uh, was present or to everybody who confirmed their attendance and also received my yesterday's email. So we'll be sharing the presentations. Uh, no worries about that. Okay, uh, but because we don't have like such a large quantity of questions as of yet, I will first uh, give rise to the question that was posed in the previous session by Luca, who's no longer with us, but uh, I already mentioned that it might be a question relevant to you, Ben. And the question was, is there a significant difference from the point of view of economic analysis between building new nuclear and extending the lifespan of existing one? Mm. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. Um, for this, I think it's interesting to, to look at um, at the US, as I knew this, this question would come, I included a slide on the US. Can you see this slide? So US, the US, this is done. The US has, uh, is always approved has 40 years of operation and then you can uh, demand another 20 years for 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 uh, uh, additional lifetime extensions and it's interesting 15 reactors are currently have, have been done have done this they are approved here on the right side you see this for an nsc 60 years license approval and even with an approval of up to 16 years they were shut down nine years nine years later they were shut down in their 40s because those are really, really old reactors, um, and they, they, it costs. It's like it, it costs a lot of money to to in, to keep them running. It, it, it's um, and in the, the one the regions where it's done in the U.S., for instance, is also where, where we have regulatory schemes in place, the zero emission credits, for instance, where um, where money is, where where the nuclear utilities get in for, uh, get 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 the subsidies to, to, to keep them running. And this, this makes it more or less profitable, but afterwards it, they still shut them down because costs are increasing. It's also interesting to look at, at France. France has um, also 40 years of operation and they get like in 10 years, you can add 10 years per reactor. And it's currently been done in France to, to, um, to, uh, to prolong their lifetimes. And ADF estimates around 50 billion uh, for their fleet. This means that in order to run another 10 years, they have to invest between 1.7 to 2.2 billion per, per reactor in the next years, which is a lot of money. Um, there has been an audit of the Court of Auditors from, from France that, that this is even underestimated, that, that it's even going to be like 100, 100 billion. So it's this high likelihood it's going to double. So we're talking about a lot of money to invest uh, to keep them to, to extend the lifetimes. Um, so these are four countries, of course, where we have huge nuclear power plant fleets. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 not economic um, to, to extend the lifetime, and we have to have to wait and see what's happening in France. The F is also uh, not that good financially. They're also near bankruptcy. There's talks that. The DF has to be bailed out. So that's even a question there, what's going to happen also with, with the major lifetime extension of their fleet. 
Thank you, Ben. Uh, I will now invite uh, Andre, who posed uh, the first question during your presentation. So, Andre, uh, if you want to pose it yourself, I can help unmute you. Sorry, which Andre? There's two of us. Uh, I believe it was, I think it was you. Or no, it was uh, Andre without the surname. So, Andre, who is just Andre, <laughs> written as just Andre. Uh, do we have just Andre with us who can pose his question himself? Yeah, yes, ah. yes, hello. Uh, I'm Andre Clements, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, my question is about uh, the capacities of uh, US nuclear industry to provide generation three or three plus uh, power plant. Uh, are they competitive to Rasatom or to uh, Framatom or Chinese industry? Because as far as we are, can follow the media in Slovenia, we already have a feeling that there is uh, already a deal made between the government of Slovenia or the border Slovenian political elite, not only the current government, but, uh, but general uh, political powers in Slovenia and the United States government mm -hmm. to go for next nuclear power plant Kershko in, in Kershko with the new uh, American designed uh, or American reactor uh, yeah. this is my this is this is my question uh, this is just in con in contradiction with with the statement that the u.s uh, industry has lost any uh, comparative advantage in, uh, in, uh, in the field so if you will go for uh, for, for it then in, and, and make it uh, most economic possible, then you would certainly not go, in my opinion, for, uh, for, uh, for US reactors. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. Westinghouse is in, is in a bad situation. Westinghouse has filed bankruptcy uh, some years ago. The orders for, from Westinghouse have been the last one in the 70s for their own reactors. And then they had some corporations in China uh, there's not, a, from my opinion, as far as I I can judge this from 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 my point of view, is that there is not a lot of capacity for U.S. nuclear industry. They they are building at their own home. They are building. They started building four reactors. Uh, one project was stopped after four years of construction. The other one is still ongoing with extreme cost explosions. Um, and apart from China, they are not building anywhere in the world. So. Um, there are even talks now, which is quite interesting. Um, there was al always this denial of of, um, of nuclear um, power for civil use and nuclear power for that it's somehow linked to the military aspect. And now you have like the former U.S. Uh, Energy Secretary of, under Obama, Moniz who published a report two years ago, three years ago, that he argues, strongly argues to invest in the nuclear capacity to the nuclear infrastructure industry in the US because it needs, the knowledge needs to be done uh, to keep the life for, for, for the, for example, for the nuclear submarines and stuff like that. So now we see that, that it must be in a really bad situation, the, the US nuclear uh, industry, because now they're coming with this argument. Um, yeah, after all, they, ha they have no reactor orders. They have been focusing on maintenance the last few years. They are now entering the decommissioning market. And I think that's where they should focus. I don't see any real nuclear capacity but from Westinghouse at the moment. Thank you, Ben. Um, the next uh, question and comment came from Jan. Uh, I hope we have only one Jan, uh, Jan Malitz. So uh, I invite uh, Jan to pose the question or give his remark. Uh, so if you can unmute. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me well? 
Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, we keep hearing about the huge cost of nuclear energy and the very low cost of renewables, but uh, somehow we have not yet seen that this would play out in practice. For example, can you comment if the renewables way is so much cheaper? Why is it that after Germany spent about 600 billion in renewables, they have both higher electricity price and both higher CO2 footprint than, for example, France, which is mostly nuclear and has much lower CO2 footprint as well as much cheaper electricity. Thank you, Jan. Um, thank uh, you. I mean, for, for example, even if each nuclear power plant, as you say, is re really expensive, like six billion, I mean, this is 100 nuclear power plants. I mean, you would be CO2 free for this kind of money. Yeah, thank you very much for, for this question. I, I cannot probably go to, into the details to answer your question perfectly, but but if you look at at the, at the fig, there was just for like a, two months ago a study published uh, on the real costs of nuclear in Germany, where they look at all the um, the research which has been done. I can't quote; uh, it's a shame I have, I have I cannot quote the exact numbers, but it's always yeah, six hundred billion is a lot. Uh, for, for renewables, but we, we never know the real cost of nuclear power. We, we, we no, don't know what's exactly been into the research. We don't know what we're doing with the waste. We don't know how much this will cost. We don't know uh, how much the commissioning will cost. Uh, there's a good chance that, that the money set aside in Germany, the 23 billion for waste management will never be enough. So the taxpayer has to pay this out uh, pay, has to pay this uh, the commissioning is, is slowly moving in germany we did, we did not yet know how much the commissioning will cost or if the utilities will survive um, so this com cost comparison is always difficult it's um we don't know the true cost of nuclear even 70 years after after building the first power plant okay thank you i see that but the exact same argument could be made for renewables, right? That you never know the exact cost and how much it will cost in one million years to store them safely and all this stuff. But you want to store safely? I mean, all the materials that you use to make solar panels and wind turbines, everything that you need to make batteries for storage. I mean, we do know the cost of nuclear, which has been around for 60 years, much better than we do for renewables, which are now an experiment in Germany, for example, where it hasn't really played out. Well, we have seen the, the presentations before where the, the cost for, for uh, recycling and so are often included in the, in, the, in the energy models by the EAA, while the cost for nuclear are excluded for decommissioning and waste management. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. I hope, because uh, um, this also, like this question has been now mentioned, it was also addressed, I don't know whether you were all present, I guess that leads us back to the presentation, particularly from Sven, uh, on uh, levelized costs and uh, the whole discussion we had on costs uh, related to renewables and recycling and all the accompanying things. So um, I guess in some, we don't have Sven with us anymore, that, could repeat all of the things that he mentioned, but maybe I would invite uh, Ben, because uh, Jan also mentioned the example of France, which is something that pops up, I think, often also in Slovenia as like, you know, France has uh, a lower CO2 footprint and their uh, uh, nuclear uh, or the price of uh, electricity is low, et cetera, et cetera. And this, uh, this example is very much reiterated in Slovenia and maybe you as an economist can shed some light because uh, we do know that the power plants in France have been uh, paid off uh, and in Slovenia there's a debate on building a new nuclear power plant but maybe now like as an economist you can say a few more things. Um, I'm quite thankful for Matthias because he just posted that the production price of electricity is 45 is cheaper at the moment than in France. Um, there's always France has, uh, um, for example, um, electricity is not cheap in France, and and this is a start. And and France is currently struggling with with what the word nuclear industry 
the status report shows also um, the high number of outages from, from nuclear power at the moment. Um, the, the, we have an aging fleet. They are often not on the grid due to uh, unexpected uh, repairments that have to be done. We have the, we have the, the currently the, the weather situation also in Europe where we have to shut down nuclear power plants in France because the, the rivers either don't have much water or don't have, um, or the water is too hot to cool them efficiently. So nuclear power is often not that much on the grid as it is at the moment, as it um, um, as it should be. So even Germ also, it's always painted this picture that 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 um, that Germany imports all the electricity from France, and and which is not true. Germany is still a, a huge net exporter, and in some cases uh, France imports. The, the, the electricity from Germany because their power plants are not, uh, the nuclear power plants are not running as they plan. Um, yeah, there's another question. Uh, if you're looking now at the chat, I think there's like a, actually not, not so much questions, but there, uh, the participants are giving comments i think to each other oh yeah now we have the last question uh or no i think that's question that's uh, from a participant to a participant but let's try to now still focus on questions uh for ben or at least we had um we didn't have i mean that's it with like questions directly formulated as questions to you ben i think now we uh, in the chat we saw that there's a few comments, uh, participators uh, commenting each other. Uh, if any of the ones that have commented um, to each other or to Jan, to I think the last one was to Jan, if anybody would like to uh, formulate this as a question or uh, a remark, um, please you're welcome to do so or um, indicate in the chat that you would like to do so. Otherwise, I can always play the devil's ad advocate for a bit uh, longer and come up with a few more questions myself, yeah. but I would rather like to hear them from uh, you. Anybody else? Um, maybe I would like, um, before people, if people are gathering uh, some more of their thoughts, um, yeah, uh, maybe uh, I would ask Ben to comment just on a, when uh, it often happens, at least when I'm discussing or updating or informing um, about what's happening in Slovenia in terms of energy policy or, or like international colleagues. And if I've been mentioning the idea for a new nuclear build uh, as like a stronghold of our climate policy and uh, if I've been saying that this idea has been getting more and more attention, like a new reactor, and that it's being um, also communicated as uh, the most reasonable, economically viable, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, often I would get uh, then sort of the feedback: Ah, what it will? I mean, it's just talk. It will never like looking at the reality of things, looking at. I guess the trends that you were uh, marking in your presentation, oh, like a new reactor will never get built. Uh, it will never come to fruition. Um, how, how would you <laughs> comment that comment? Is that actually um, a completely realistic scenario that no matter how big of a political whatever push uh, there might be that because of also the trends that you were pointing out, it will never come at the end into fruition. How would you comment that? Well, I can't comment on the on Slovenia as a card, as a, for the case of Slovenia, but it's always talk about, about nuclear power. Yeah, it's a, it's a fix, and and um, looking just at the at at, at the market also uh, as as the previous presenter has done, there is no. It's not logical to build nuclear power plants. Um, if, a, if a country really wants to pursue this way politically, they can do it, of course. But then you can then 
just take a look at France. France is in this position where it was a major nuclear exporter and they try to, to want to, to, to save face and, and, and build new construction, new, new reactors. And, and there's also like this politically done and we have a huge cost explosion and not even sure if, if Flamanville will ever get on the grid. There are huge scandals there. Um, nobody knows really what's going on there. We have, we have scandals from, from where uh, the, the company that produced the reactor pressure vessels falsified some quality documents. Um, uh, in the end, Maybe maybe there's going to be build a power plant, but then it's one or two or five. I, I cannot see a scenario where where um, like we're going to build until 2050 hundreds and hundreds of new nuclear power plants. This is from a from a uh, from an economic perspective not feasible. From an industrial perspective, it's it's impossible. Who is going to build these reactors? We, we don't even have the know-how anymore to build this except for, for Russian companies or in some cases, Chinese companies. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how, how to, to really answer the case for Slovenia, but... Uh, 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 yeah, you're not uh, uh, required to comment on Slovenia in specific, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to get some more of your thoughts. Um, well, this is uh, like, um, as... Um, I'm now, I, I will now feel like a, a waiter, <laughs> uh, how do you say, um, yelling out the last round, uh, everybody. But yeah, this is really my appeal to everybody. Uh, uh, that uh, if you do have a question for Ben, please ask it now, because uh, he won't be with us. Because, um, for example, now we've been like, there's there's questions and comments that are coming in that were really suitable, I guess, for Sven, but Sven is no longer with us. So if you have something that's really suitable for Ben, uh, take the advantage now because he won't be with us uh, later on. Um, so yeah, if there's any more questions. And for Jan, uh, oh no, oh yeah. Jan and Jan, Jan and Jan are talking in the chat, but still no questions for Ben. So. Uh, I guess, yeah, we don't need to artificially, uh, let's say, prolong uh, our meeting. Uh, it's been, uh, yeah, three hours, uh, three hours of um, great presentations and discussions for today. Uh, I hope we will be seeing all of you, uh, if, like, if not all of you, but most of you, uh, also tomorrow. Uh, we'll have with us... Um, uh, two guests from the UK and our first presentation will be really focusing on the UK experience when it comes to their uh, nuclear program or nuclear ambitions and what's happening uh, there. Uh, so we'll have more of a, as well, a case, realistic case study uh, uh, from a uh, country that we know a bit of, but maybe not the uh, uh, details. Uh, then we will also have a presentation that will go a bit uh, broader and we'll look into um, this, uh, the interdependence between civil and military use of uh, nuclear energy, questions of um, qualities of democracy when it comes to different nuclear policies in, in countries, how that actually uh, correlates. Um, and then we will close out with a presentation by uh, Jochen Markard from uh, ETH Zurich, uh, and his specialty is um, uh, analyzing um, techno uh, technological innovation, like te uh, technologies from a technological innovation or decline perspective. So uh, we'll again have, I think, a very interesting discussion on this like renewables, nuclear um, uh, perspective, but from a, a bit of a more um, perspective that, that includes the dynamics between different political and economic actors. Um, so yes, hopefully you will uh, join us tomorrow and I think this is it for today um, I hope you found it uh, a valuable use of your time we certainly did thank you again to Ben uh, and see you all tomorrow thank you